I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Today, we have a very interesting topic. It's one I've wanted to jump into. I've wanted to get into the marrow of this topic for a very long time. It's something that we haven't talked about in the past. I want to talk about swim clubs and the board of swim clubs and the management of swim clubs and how that can, can go well, but oftentimes it, it does not because I think anybody who's in swimming knows that uh, we've, we've heard horror stories. We've heard a lot of gripes and complaints, and it seems like the problems might be solvable. But that's the reason why we brought in an expert today to help us with this, Renata Porter. She's the founder of YourSportsResource.com, YourSportsResource.com. If you want to hit pause, pop over there, peruse her website, check her out. Um, you can do that and you can come back and give us a listen. Renata Porter is a dedicated swim business expert with a focus on youth sports clubs. Her company provides actionable guidance and support to help swim clubs to shift from old mindsets and sameness to running the clubs as the business it is. has helped clubs have positive operational outcomes by being an end-to-end -end partner, sharing her passion to see clubs succeed. Again, that's YourSportsResource.com. Renata, thanks for coming on. Well, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. You, you're, you're, already, you're, you're coming with, with, with the pro mindset. You're, 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 um, not everyone has the microphone that you have, and I have to give you props <laughs> for that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a high bar. If I meet the microphone standards, I'm doing well. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's a really important bar. It's one, it's one I, I try to pay attention to. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just going to put my cards on the table. At, at Swim Swam, you know, we're like Switzerland. We're the center of the world. Information flows in and flows out. And we're trying to service a marketplace as best we can. And it's... Um, it can be very chaotic. And, and, mm. and in the background, oftentimes we do hear um, things that we don't report. And what we don't report is, is this the organizational and this framework of the, it's the underpinning of, of the fabric of our sport, which is club teams mm -hmm. all over the world, particularly in the United States. We, we hear it more because we're a U.S. based company, but we do hear this story from all over the world. And, um, you know, before some summer started, I heard these stories going back three and a half decades and it was, and what you would hear is you would hear that clubs and their boards were completely disorganized or they were making decisions and you always scratched your head or there were ongoing problems that festered and you just couldn't figure out why the adults in the room who mm. were leading the club team couldn't get it together. So let's just, let's just jump into it. Right. When a club team decides, uh, you know, hey, we have an issue. We need some expertise. They need outside guidance. What are swim clubs looking for? Well, I think often they get themselves in a situation that they know how to rectify, but they don't necessarily have the way forward or they don't have the, mm, the guts to make a, a difficult decision. Or, um, or sometimes, you know, listen, I, I get called in to just say, Hey, we know what we're doing. We're on a great path. And we just want to, we want to uh, plan out our future and do our strategic plan. But I would say probably eight times out of 10, I'm called in because either, um, you have an ineffective board or you have a board and a coaching staff or a head coach that just don't see eye to eye. Or it's a coach run team and they've kind of been growing and, and all of a sudden they're way too big and they're drowning because they're trying to do everything. You know, just, I worked with a lot of startups and that's just the nature of that business. Right. So, um, so it's usually to solve a problem and they just need guidance. So it can be, they need someone to hold them accountable and show them the way, or it can just be, you know, somebody that's, you know, listen, Hey, you're doing great bounce some ideas off of me. Yeah, that sounds good. But I'm also thinking about this. What do you, does that sound good to you to try something like that? Sometimes they just need support. But I think by the nature of the industry, you know, you mentioned the boards. Um, 
because there's turnover, you end up with boards that turn over quite heavily and with all the best intentions, volunteers always have the best intentions, but maybe not the best skill set. And I think um, a lot of times that's where the problems start. And then you also have coaching staff that are really stuck in old school leadership methods that have just got to go. They just got to go. <laughs> well, it was all right. I, okay, I, I, I've got to follow up on what you just said there. But before I do it, I will say this. You made me feel a little bit of compassion for club teams because I, 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 I framed this entire conversation in, in such a negative way. But what I did hear in there was that, you know, clubs are successful. And when they're yeah. successful, they're growing. And when and I, this is something I understand. At, at some point, we would start growing and we things would, would fall apart and get disorganized and slip. And it was embarrassing. And um, But we were good at what we did and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and we figured it out. So I, I, I've, uh, so you made me feel a little bit of compassion for, for club team. So let's, but let, so I just want to say that. And then when I come back to this, this and then you want to go back to the negative, I want to go back to, I'm going to go back to the negative. All right. This, yeah. It, this is something that is, it's a little bit of a trigger for people. Co- mm. Coach is stuck in an old mindset. Define mm-hmm. that. What, what, what do you mean? What do you mean there? Mm. So, so, <laughs> So by and large, they usually tend to focus on their group of swimmers and the coaches that are within arm's length. Okay. So you can have a head coach that's got 20 coaches, but really only focuses on the top tier senior coaches and their own senior staff. And I'm really, really, really trying to get them to shift to focusing on their coaches and the development of their coaches, because when you do that, then across the board, your team elevates across the board, right? So everybody improves success wise at every level, every level, right? Not just your seniors that you're, you're supremely focused on. And in that, I just want to say a little caveat because head coaches also want to hold on to, no, I manage all 20 of my people. Well, okay. Come into the real world. That's not efficient effective. Your staff don't feel valued because there's no way in heck you can do your job, do your long-term planning um, and everything else that has to go with, with leading a swim club plus manage 20 people effectively. And so I try to get them to think about, you know, a lot of companies are trying to pull out layers and I'm trying to get coaches to put in layers, right? I'm trying to get them to at least add in one more layer of management or reporting levels to where every single staff member has that opportunity for a feedback loop. Every every single staff member has a person that they talk to consistently. So communication flows up and down and back and forth and that they're, they build those bonds of trust and investment. Like, hey, these coaches are really invested in me because you know, I'm getting all the information that I hear on deck from other people that I used to never get. I'm getting it now. And I'm also having those one-on-one conversations where I know that I'm being developed and I'm able to ask hard questions. And, you know, it's not, I get those conversations instead of only like when a problem arises, now they're investing me as a, as a, as a positive nature and a force. So when we can get them out of that old mindset and investing in the leadership and in their and in their coaches then things just start to tick right and it always seems like a lot of work up front but that's what i try to get them to do like if you invest in your coaches it'll translate in the pool if you just focus on your senior your swim group which is usually your top tier right your elite swimmers of the team and the couple of coaches that you have in arm's length well those are the only improvements that you may see And then you're going to have problems. You're constantly putting out fires and that kind of thing. Sounds like you have disgruntled parents. Um, No, I, I don't know that I would say that. I would say that sometimes there's boards that they hear a lot of rumblings. The board does, or there's a lot of complaints from parents going to the board, but they don't really know how to solve it. They don't really know what the problems are, right? And another thing that I really talk about with clubs is that the wet and the dry side need to be a united front. The board and the coaches need to be a united front. So no matter what, like even if a coach makes the 
an iffy decision, the board is aware of it and can stand behind him and her and support her in, in, in their efforts, right? Whereas if coaches are going off rogue and the parents or the board are only fielding negative feedback, well, how can they support the coaching staff? So they kind of put each other in a really bad situation to where one side's always talking negatively about the other side instead of just coming together and understanding each other's point of view. Now, does that mean the coach needs to get every little approval from the board? No. Does that mean the board needs to be wagging their finger at the coach constantly? No, but it should be a well-developed relationship. So you're a united front to your membership, which uh, let's not forget they are your customer. They are the ones paying your bills, right? Because you are a business. You're not just some kid's swim club. Let's pull out. Let's let's, let's pull yeah. out. Let's pull out. You know, thirty thousand feet, and 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 I'm going to ask you a question from the outside looking in. If I'm calculating what what these businesses are, and they are businesses, even mm-hmm. a small team can have a bottom line of generating you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue a year, mm-hmm. all the way to super teams that are you know I I know because I was on some super teams, and uh, their bottom line was anywhere between four and seven million dollars per year. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's a that's suddenly you're you have to have some expertise. That's a real business. Yeah. Is uh, is it's where do you see the need in 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 in, in between the tiny tiny clubs and these super teams? Is it is it pervasive, or is it um, you know, is, is there is there typically a you're like oh when a team hits seven figures a year, I know there's they're they're gonna they're growing they're gonna start to see problems. No, I don't. I I can't say. I mean, it's just like in any other business. I would never say that one side has an upper hand on the other. It's just that one side's really great at generating revenue right now. Does that mean they're profitable than the smaller business? Nope. (laughs) Does that mean they're actually percentage-wise sending? I mean, I've got a really big team now that percentage-wise didn't send as many kids to junior nationals than some of the smaller kids, right? So if we were to look at everything on the same playing field. No, I don't think there's like a a be all end all. What I do see is that with the smaller clubs are usually coach run, right? And they face the problems that entrepreneurs face, like um, trying to catch up and they're spending a lot of time looking at their feet instead of looking ahead at the future, right? And I, when I try to get them to look ahead, that's like, okay, but you're growing. So you need to plan now so you're not playing catch up with processes and how you're going to handle something and what budget you need. You'd be amazed at how many of the smaller clubs do not know how to manage a budget. You'd be amazed at how many major clubs that boards don't even look at their budget. That one just flips me the frick out. That flips me out. But anyways, I I I digress, you know, but they all come with their own issue. They all come with their own issues. It's how, and it's how they've been able to plan to manage and negotiate their strategic moving forward. And then the levels of what types of processes and plans and roles and responsibilities just depend on the size of the organization. There are moments when they're, I, I wouldn't call them whistleblowers. They're kind of like whistleblowers where people mm-hmm. will report financials to us. And uh, sometimes it's a story that unfolds and, 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 and reaches the front page if it's, if it's ridiculous. And, some, and but more oftentimes, it's just obviously a, a, a club is, is managing past mismanagement. And, yeah. um, but the, uh, something always comes back. And it, you said it, and, and, I, and it's a... And, and, and this is what I hear. I hear that the the board volunteers, that no one on the board volunteer, uh, among the board volunteers, was was watching watching the books. They had well, they, they were advocating they were advocating for whatever they were advocating for. They were charismatic. They got on the board mm-hmm. because everybody likes them, but no one was was watching the finances. And I'm my jaw hits the ground when I hear that, but I do hear it quite a bit. So there's usually that case of. People not, I don't want to say there's usually, there are the cases where people don't watch the finances. What I think the problem is, is that the board feels like the finance person. So whether it's the board treasurer or they have, um, you know, a bookkeeping and a treasurer, or they send everything to the accountant, they just feel like it's in hand with whoever's supposed to be taking care of it. Now, where I have a problem with it is 
you said it. When there's a problem, the board doesn't understand that they are legally on the hook. If something comes out in the public, it's the board whose face gets in the newspaper, who gets questioned by the IRS, right? It's not just the person who's managing the finances, it's the board. But in the end, the biggest thing that I try to get across to clubs is how in the heck can you make informed decisions to spend money on X or Y or Z if you really don't understand your finances? Now, do they need to know the nth degree? No, but they should have an overall idea of how they're doing with actuals against budget, and then at least three to six months down the road, what it's going to look like, right? They should have an understanding so they can make well-informed decisions. And that's what really drives me insane. I'm not expecting that every board member, because not everybody's like financially um, strong, right? They just assume, oh no, I don't want to watch it. Uh, The treasurer's got it. I don't need to know anything about it. And that's wrong because- You need to understand that when you put your hand up and say yes to put on an event or yes to support someone to go to an event or whatever, to allocate funds to something, how can you make that decision honestly if you don't understand your finances? The other side of it, the smaller clubs are just so busy running, 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 like I said, looking at their feet. And all of a sudden they go, holy crap, where'd my money go? I just want them to understand their, their, their budget, right? Yeah. <laughs> with 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 large teams, um, well, I, I hear feedback that you know there's just there's one or two people and they're volunteers mm-hmm. and uh, volunteers you're not getting paid and they are held up as as just this this you know the the angel of of, of swimming and everything is on their shoulders and what you learn when you dig in is that they're doing the fin- the finances and that they're exhausted and if you talk mm-hmm. to them they're exhausted. Mm-hmm. And they're barely getting it done. And, and the fact that they get it done is this heroic feat. And uh, so then to come to them, so I, I'm aware of this situation. So then to come to them and say, hey, okay, you've done that. You, you're, you're doing the job. It's a big job. It's a volunteer job. But now I need you not only to do that job, but I need you to project out three, six, nine months, a year, three years. How's that received? So usually not well because it's overwhelming. And that's because they don't have great relationships with the administrative staff or the coaching staff. So if they had a good working relationship, just like in any business, right? You can't have the finance team making up numbers. They got to go talk to the people who live in it day to day. Like what's coming up three months down the road that we need to know about. So we make sure that we've got enough budget to handle this event or it's a month off and we chose not to, uh, to, we don't collect dues that month, whatever it may be, you have to understand what's coming down the road, right? So I think it's, that just goes down to the relationship with the board and the, or the person managing the finances and the rest of the people in the organization. If you don't mind, I'd like to touch about the, the one individual um, who's overwhelmed and this is another area that I try to, um, I try to get clubs. This is another one of those areas where I say, uh, focus on your club as a business, as the business that it is, right? So just because they're volunteers doesn't mean that you have to take whoever you can get. And I try to get people to reframe what they actually need and build roles and responsibilities for board members. Now, depending on the team, that's going to mean a lot of different things, right? There's boards who are purely supervisory and they've got paid staff across left to right. There's boards that are all in and doing all the work and working with the coaching staff. It just kind of depends on the club. So you have to outline what those roles and responsibilities are. But no longer is it good enough to take someone on the board who just raises their hand and it's an empty seat or an empty shirt is the typical terminology, right? You need to recruit for who you need, decide what you need, what skill set you need, and then you need to go recruit for that type of person. And I think that when clubs start to open up and think that way, it shifts the mindset from going, well, nobody's ever volunteering and they know that we overwork them so they don't want to come on board. Well, they only overwork because you've recruited the wrong people. You got a seat of five and three are dead weight. So two people are trying to do everything. That's not fair. So recruit for five people that will divide the work. So it's not so overwhelming. 
you know, but people, it, it, that's a hard uh, ship to turn because getting them to under, well, I just can't get anybody. So I'll just take them. Why? They do more damage. Why would you do that? You wouldn't hire somebody like that. So why would you bring on a volunteer like that? Yeah. Anyways, there you go. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> oftentimes when, you, when, it, when, it, when it hits the real world and it's uh, and, and we're hearing about it or rumors are flying around uh, around a club, the, you know, a club across town's hearing bad things about the club on the South side mm. of town. And, um, you know, and these, and these, these conversations and rumors can, 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 can go all across the entire comp- country. There are no secrets in swimming. Everybody, everybody knows everything and they hear something. Um, oftentimes you, you hear about boards that are at war and they're at war, you know, they're siding with one coach and they're the other half is trying to get rid of a coach or, or they're, they're, you know, there's two people on the board and they're, they're trying to bring in somebody new. It, it seems like, do you get called in when, when, when it's, when it's that, when there's that much friction and when boards are breaking down? Yeah, I have been, I've, I've been probably with two or three that I can think of that it's really been a mess. Like I've had one board that I told them to resign. Here's the thing with me, right? My, my, what keeps me grounded is that my interests are going to be for the membership, right? I go in with open eyes. I usually get hired by the board who's got issues with a coach or I'm hired by a coach that's got issues with the board, right? So I listen, but I also take information and gather information from everybody so I can understand the whole story because sometimes it's pure and simple. They're both saying the same thing. They're just not listening to each other and realizing that they're on the same team. So my endeavor is always for the best outcome for their membership. So when I come in, my intent is to fix the problem that will reap the best results for the membership. Now I'm given boundaries, like it's got to stay with who we have, or like this isn't working. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the position to where I can be very black and white and be very blunt and go, you need to go. Sorry. But if you're not going to work and if your intentions is not to serve the membership, but just to serve your kids group or, Hey coach, if you're unwilling to broaden and grow in your own horizons, how the heck do you expect to lead others? Well, you know, there's a problem there, right? Um, so sometimes, yeah, I am brought in to say things that people wish they could say themselves. And, you know, I'm not that, not that rude about it, but there are times when I'm pretty blunt. But most of the time it's I come from the best intentions for the for the membership. I say things for the best intentions of the membership. And I think often it's because people are at an impasse and they're not being valued, they're not being heard. And they're tired, they're overworked. The coach feels undercut and undervalued because they have a board that doesn't understand. The board feels like they have a reckless coach when sometimes it's none of that. It all comes down to the fact that you guys have lost your path of building trust with each other and not being able to listen with each other. The, uh, so I'm 53 uh, in my adult life. I've been uh, you know, across two dozen different Boards, nonprofits, trusts, companies. Um, there have been three moments where everything broke down, and there was litigation, and there was a mediator. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the funny thing is that you know you have to do you have to do mediation, and it's uh, I'm always amazed by that person that can walk into the middle of something, and uh, it seems like they have one skill. And that one skill is to read the situation, read everyone. And, um, and I've been on both sides of it where the, that person has said, you're correct. And, and I need to, that other, the, I'm going to help the other side understand that. But I've also been on the opposite side of it that where someone has said, this isn't going to work the way you think it's going to work. And this is the reality. And you need to understand yeah. this, but it's, a, and so I've, I've heard it from both sides and, uh, and that's a unique skill. So, so where, where do you gain a, a skill like that? How, how, how does that work? <laughs> I think for me, it's come from 20 plus years of leading massive departments and managing giant teams and multi-million dollar projects, right? So in order to lead, you know, my last job is, was leading an IT department 
for a university, right? So in order to lead a massive team like that, you have to be able to read body language, read people, see the gears turning when they're afraid to speak up, right? Watch the dynamics between people. And I think I've just really honed those skills. Now, what I've had to really learn is to shut my mouth and pay attention a little bit longer than I'd like to. Um, Because there are times when I would just like to jump in and solve, even if I've got it correct from the, the minute that I start, I really have learned that the best thing I can do is pick away. I call it challenging, but a lot of people, people, when I say the word challenge, they take it from a negative perspective. And it's not really that. It's more that I go, but why do you think that way? Why do you think that's the best way forward? And it's mainly because I want to understand their thought process, but I also want to make sure that they understand their own thought process. Like, are they really thinking like that? Is that truly what they want or is it really two steps to the left that they really want? You know, so um, I have I've just kind of. I've always had gut instincts and good at learning people's behavior, matching what they say. It's actually I, I register with their behavior much more than what comes out of their mouth. But um, I think maybe my, now now in in the life that we live in our country today a lot of people just don't take a step back and use their ears more than their mouth so when somebody like me who comes in and is like just wait a minute let them finish what they're saying i need you to hear it with the best intent i need you to hear what they're saying as if they're trying to put something forward that's in the best interest of the membership right and when you kind of frame people that way they'll sit back and they'll listen and then let me pick away at it, then sometimes things get to be said that the person intended, but never got to get the words out. And then somebody, sorry about the dog barking, but then, you know, somebody can hear, then somebody can hear the message um, a little bit easier. And I think that's a key factor for somebody like me, whether it's me or some other consultant, when they come on board, it's really good to have somebody who has no skin in the game who can be that mediator or facilitator for great conversation to get you to the end, you know, that, you know, to meet the means that you need. And um, that's why I love my job. I really love my job. (laughs) It sounds like a full contact sport. It is. I I really struggled when we were um, doing everything via um, remotely. And uh, trying to get people to say, hey, okay, let me come. We, I know you haven't met with your board in two years face-to-face, but it's time. Let's get in a room. I want everybody, I don't care if we're six feet apart and I got to rent a giant showroom in order for us to sit in, but we need to be in the same room. You need to hear tone. You need to see body language. I need to read people. And um, now that's over with, you know, I go I go to almost every single club I work with, but um but it's a, it's a big factor getting everybody in the room and having people use their ears more than their mouth. What's interesting to me in, in sports, and it, I, I, it, I think it's all sports, but I'm, I'm very focused on swim. It just seems like parents can get tripped out. Everybody's so emotional mm-hmm. about it. And it's their children. I understand. Um, if I really dig into situations, uh, Oftentimes I can, I find that it comes down and it's usually the problems, one person and one person can be destructive and, uh, and it's, and it's, 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 that seems like a very unusual situation to manage. And it's, uh, I'm thinking of something that I don't want to say. I'm thinking of a club that I don't want to say there, 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 I'll, I'll just, I'll speak in general terms. There was a club that was a dynasty. And it completely fell apart. And I know it fell apart because of one person. Mm-hmm. And they were, uh, yes, unfortunately, so, yes. Yeah, so it, it sounds to me like you're, you're just like, yeah, I see. This is my, this is what but I do. Why does a parent wield that much power? I don't know. That's crazy. So here's the thing. To me, that means that first of all, those who are involved in the leadership of that club, so that's volunteers and paid staff. So whether that's your board and your head coach, or it's just, you know, your coaching staff are not on the same page on how to handle um, bad situations. Part of the work I do with clubs is the vision, values, and behaviors. And when I approach them on doing that values and behavior work, it is about what 
it's not about just for the swimmers. Actually, swimmers come probably last in that scenario, right? The values and the behaviors are for the staff, for the volunteers, for the parents, and then for the swimmers. And that means that we are all going to live above the line. When you step on deck with us and you come to swim with us, that means you are going to behave. That means you show up in the right mindset. You speak to people in the correct way. You follow processes. And if you don't have processes, then you need to make them right. So to me, that one parent, I don't know if it was a parent or a volunteer or whatever that uh, situation was, but the dismantling I blame the leadership for that. Where's your strength? Where's your backbone? Why didn't you call somebody and ask for help? That's just crazy to me. We ask, we see this with organizations, even at the international and the domestic level. It's, we see the biggest organizations in the sport and uh, you see, you don't see anything this extreme, but you'll see it in subtle ways play out. Mm -hmm. And it's always the same situation in the back of your head where like, where, why aren't people standing up and leading? Because yep. leadership is, is a leadership is hard, but it's a, um, God, it's, it's a thankless job and no one's going to pat you on the back. And oftentimes it's nope. when the doors close, but sometimes you got to step up and say what's right. Uh, we, we challenge our athletes. We always, you know, your coach is always challenging, you know, swimming is a difficult sport. You are yep. your head underwater. You're, you're, it's, it's challenging. It's hard. You give up a lot of your life. And our coaches all throughout our lives asked us, they challenged us. Mm -hmm. Now, why wouldn't we do the same with our own organization? Absolutely. Why wouldn't a coach challenge themselves for growth? How can, how do you know, you know, it all, how can you not set goals and grow when you choose, when you tell your athletes to do that, but to get back to, to the leadership side of it, that all goes back to a board setting expectations for roles and responsibilities and recruiting people with the right skill set. If your board doesn't have the skill set to deal with a negative situation in an adult manner, then they are not fit to sit on the board. That's just my, that's just plain and simple. And if you know you're not, you're, let's say you're the board president, right? And you know you're not fit to manage this really difficult situation, then you owe it to your membership, the people who pay the staff bills that keeps that, that club afloat to find an answer. So go find a consultant, go to a different club and ask them how they handle the situation. I mean, there's over 3000 clubs. You can't tell me that they can't reach out to people and, and get help. Now I know people, here's another problem I face. I never know the true story of any club I walk into until I'm already, I just, I was telling you earlier at the start of the show until I'm waist deep. Right. And then I always have to back up and start over. So I know that people don't want to share their dirty laundry with other people, but that doesn't mean that you still can't seek out support and help in some way, shape or fashion. Right. So I, a lot of clubs will call me without engaging me whatsoever to say, Hey, we have this problem. What do you think? And I will freely give out advice, right? Swimming, I believe is what made me a strong leader throughout my entire young adulthood and adulthood. I owe a lot to swimming, right? So I will give back 200% what is given to me. So you got a problem, you got a question, you want a quick, like, I'm not going to solve all your problems. You need to engage me. But if you got something like really, that's really creating chaos in your organization and you want some suggestions on how to move forward, give me a, give me a call, write me an email, whatever, I'll help you out. But I really struggle with those boards who allow parents to, or coaches, you know, to misbehave and continue to misbehave because the worst thing that you can do for your culture, whether it's paid staff or parents is to let those who follow the rules, watch those who don't get away with it. I It'll take like your need, culture I, in a heartbeat. We're going to, we're going to have to have you back for more episodes <laughs> and we're going to see just, just if there's, you know, maybe we should be, a, we, we should do a case study and this, and we'll call it the X, Y, Z team. Sure. And, uh, and maybe you can pull some characteristics from a bunch of different clubs and, uh, Mix them up so no one can identify what it is, and yep. you can we can you can we can go through and you can say this is how you troubleshoot this. Would you do something like that with me? Absolutely, I would love it. I think that would be great. 
any yeah. opportunity for people to take information and apply it to their club to make it better so they can serve their membership, I'm all in. And I'm, and I'm hoping that I hear from people that, that that will catch this on the download and and because they'll shoot me a text or they'll, they'll send me an email and I'll ask a question or they'll say, hey, this came to mind. Um, and I can, I, I'll shoot you those questions. We'll, we'll, we'll build out another, another talk. Um, Sounds great. On, on, on this topic, just, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but mm -hmm. is there, is there, you know, it seems like everybody uses team unify and that as a software platform. Mm -hmm. And is it, is it, uh, you know, is, is that, is, is that ever an issue? Like in terms of the background and the software that you're running, do you, do you come in and say, Hey, here's some options that you can, you can work with. You don't like this. You can try something else or you're managing your books on QuickBooks. Don't use QuickBooks. Uh, is it, do, do you, do you, is, is that a part of anything that you do? I do look at um, software and I do ask what they, how they manage their, um, like I'll ask how they manage their, so I recommend QuickBooks online because it's really easy for them to get a good snapshot, right? But I wouldn't recommend that you use them for invoicing if you're really watching your tight budget. I'd invoice somewhere else, right? I've got a few recommendations for lower rates on that. But um, as far as Team Unify competitors, I know there's one competitor out there that's making headway. I don't really make a whole lot of recommendations there. Um, but I know a lot of, I mean, just that's a simple thing that clubs can do to keep up as far as communication wise with their families that they don't even take advantage of that because, and that's keeping up with their website because they hate Team Unify. So I'm sorry, Team Unify. I don't mean to be putting no, you on blast, but it's, yeah, it, it's, I, I didn't, you know, I, I have, I, everybody complains about Team Unify and yeah. people at the same time love Team Unify. It's, it's a hub. You have to favorite. learn it and you have to understand it just like yeah. any other tool. Right. So, but what I was going to say is just because you don't like to use the tool, that means you don't abandon it. I mean, your website is the is the first point of contact for your potential customers and your current customers or your membership, right? So why is your website not up to date? Why is a lot of your information not on your website? I don't care if you don't like it or not. You need to figure it out, right? Ask Team Unify for help. Get help. Get help from us, you know, whatever it is. But um I do, I do just to get back to your original question. Yeah, I do uh, look for efficiencies. I do help them go, okay, we could probably adjust this here and there. And that would either, it'll either solve a process problem, an efficiency problem, or a financial problem. And yeah, that's, that's a good piece of work that I do. All right. We're going to have you back on what, which, okay. which uh, I, I think we have some sort of organization about what's going to happen, but we're going to, we need to hear from the audience. Yeah, They're going to, they're going to let us know too. But I've enjoyed it. I feel like we've just scratched the surface. And Thank you. So, I appreciate it. It's been fun. That's all right. Do you have any parting thoughts? Um, yeah, I would just uh, let everybody know to to go to the website. There's you can always book a free call with me there just to have a conversation. There's I think it's on the consulting page. You can book a free call. It's thirty minutes. Um, uh, there's a Your Sports Resource podcast that you can go to on any of the platforms. There's articles. There's free information on the site. And um, yeah, I mean, if you have questions, just reach out to me. You can do rp at renataporter .com or info at yoursportsresource .com. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.